Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Spine Nevada Virtual Health Seminar. This is Molly Canaday, Director of Integrated Marketing for Spine Nevada. We're excited to have all of you join us this evening and grateful to have this opportunity to share updates in spine, joint, and orthopedic health. During tonight's virtual event, you'll hear from Dr. Andrew Sue on the following topics, when to seek treatment for back, neck, or joint pain, and innovative non-surgical treatments to relieve spine and joint conditions. We will have time at the end of Dr. Sue's presentation for question and answer, so please submit your questions through the Q&A box. Without further delay, I'll introduce you to Dr. Andrew Sue. Dr. Sue is board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation. He completed fellowship training in sports and spine medicine at Columbia University and Cornell University in New York. Fellowship training is the highest level of medical training available in the US. Dr. Al Dr. Sue also has a master's of public health from the University of Michigan. He has experience in performing image guided procedures for spine and musculoskeletal conditions. Image guidance allows physicians to precisely place the medicine during the interventional procedure. In addition to traditional injection therapy, Dr. Sue is trained and experienced in orthobiologics procedures, including platelet rich plasma, bone marrow aspirate concentrate, and lipogen. He joined the Spine Nevada practice in 2017 after relocating from Wisconsin. I'll now turn the meeting over to Dr. Sue. All right, thank you, Molly, for the introduction. I'm Dr. Sue, uh, Asia Silent. I appreciate everybody for logging in and uh, watching this presentation. I hope to educate you all on what we can do here at Spine Nevada and what I do. Uh, next slide. Okay, so uh, so I just wanted to touch base. We, we've come through a big pandemic over the past year. Um, and luckily uh, we've made a lot of progress. Uh, the case count is going down and everybody has contributed to trying to keep everybody else safe. Uh, here at Spine Nevada, we do uh, continue to follow the CDC guidelines, but we are very proud that uh, the community as a whole, uh, including Reno and the Sparks and, and Washoe County has been making a lot of progress. Um, and we continue to strive to keep everybody safe as they come to our clinic so that uh, they feel comfortable in seeking care. Uh, next slide. So when, when does one want to seek uh, care with us or another spine or musculoskeletal provider? Um, when pain affects daily life and functional activities. Um, if the pain is so severe that your physical activity that you normally like to do, maybe going for a walk or a run, uh, and you can't do that anymore. So you may have this concerns for pain or discomfort. Uh, you may have worsening range of motion limitations. So that means like getting out of bed and you're just, oh, you can't move. You gotta do your daily activities, tying your shoes, getting dressed. And it's just becoming more and more painful. Um, and then more particularly, if you're having weakness, numbness um, in your arms or your legs and you started to feel that um, something's just not right, that's definitely something that you would wanna seek some additional care. Next slide. So some non-surgical treatments for the spine and joints. This is what I do specifically. Uh, we're a very integrative practice where we have physical therapy, uh, physical medicine, rehabilitation, pain management. Uh, and also we have, uh, uh, we have neurosurgery uh, with excellent neurosurgeons. So uh, what I focus on is the spine and orthopedic side of things, including neck pain, low back pain, Mid-back pain, that's the thoracic pain. Uh, you can have sciatica or radiating pain. We also call that radiculopathy. And then you can have orthopedic and musculoskeletal issues such as shoulder pain, shoulder arthritis, elbow pain, elbow arthritis, knee pain, uh, uh, wrist pain, and hand pain. Uh, there could be ankle pain, feet pain, tendon pain, which is basically uh, the, the tissue that connects from one bone to another. Um, and the, uh, the, the muscles to the bone and the ligaments which connect from one bone to another. Um, and then uh, any other really small joint in the hand, feet, um, neck, back uh, can also be treated by us. So some of these things that we will go into uh, specifically are more of the advanced procedures. So let's say you already went 
and saw your primary care doctor and or maybe you have a chiropractor that you that you work with and you're just not making the progress that you need to be making uh, you're still in some pain discomfort it's affecting your daily life uh, after we evaluate you we make sure that we've already uh, done everything uh, to try to help exhaust conservative care then we move on to more of the interventional treatments and so those interventional treatments can involve injecting the joints in your back those are called the facet joint injections uh, you may have heard of what's called epidurals, and those are epidural steroid injections. A little bit different than the ones for pregnancy. We, we really inject the steroids around the nerves that are getting pinched uh, to help with nerve pain and disc pain. Uh, it can also help with back pain. So if you have back and leg pain, epidurals are really good for that. Uh, we also do joint injections of all the joints in the body uh, from shoulder, hips, knees, uh, ankles, hands and feet, and wrists. Um, and then we also do like more orthopedic uh, specialized injections like Suparts, which is a gel. Uh, it's, um, it's a hyaluronic acid that helps um, decrease inflammation in the knee and it's meant for that specifically. Uh, we, we inject the areas where that, the outside of the hip maybe what it's called the greater trochanter bursa. And we have bursas all throughout the body, but those are areas of inflammation between layers of muscle, okay? So, um, a plantar fascia is uh, the bottom of the foot. So people have, they step out of bed and they, they, they take the first step and their heel hurts. That usually is a sign of plantar fasciitis. And we can also treat that as well. Carpal tunnel, very common. So you're getting tingling and numbness in one, two, three, and four digits. Sometimes you start to feel the whole hand. Uh, the possibilities are usually your neck or your, or your carpal tunnel, which is in your wrist right in here. So we inject that as well. We also do nerve tests for that as well, called EMG. Um, and uh, there are other injections we do, trigger points, trigger finger, occipital blocks. Um, and then we start becoming more of this other spine injections, our sacroiliac joints. Those are the joints in your pelvis. Um, you can fuse those joints uh, as well, as well as we do in a radio frequency ablation. Um, and then we have nerve stimulations and procedures for neuropathy, chronic pain. We do orthobiologic treatments for all of the above. And then, uh, then we also have uh, other advanced stimulation techniques like spinal cord stimulation, which is also called a dorsal column stimulation, which we'll go into detail a little bit later. Uh, next. So what is musculoskeletal? Why do I keep on bringing that word up? Really, it's a very all-encompassing word. It means muscle. Um, and part of the skeleton. So it could be muscle, bones, ligaments, tendons, and nerves. And uh, as we age, the population, everybody starts to feel new aches and pains. And so that was, that's what leads to 40 million visits or more and new visits to your primary care provider or your provider of choice. Thanks. So musculoskeletal pain affects over 126 million American adults. And over 75 million adults are estimated to have neck and low back pain at any given point. And then over 51 million adults uh, have arthritis. And now we think about how many people are in the, the United States. That's it's, it's really um, about 300 million. So we're, we, we are, uh, and that's not including adult, that's only the whole population. So pretty much everybody at some point will experience some form of musculoskeletal pain. Um, in addition, about 8% of the adult population suffers from chronic neuropathic pain. And we'll go into this a little bit detailed later, but neuropathic pain really means pain from the nerves themselves. So causes of low back pain, there's a lot of causes. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen people who say, uh, other professionals, other doctors who will say, low back pain is easy. I can tell you for a fact, it's not easy to figure out. Sometimes it's from the muscles, from the joints. Sometimes it's from the disc. You've heard of that before probably. Uh, there's a, sometimes lead to what's called the slippage called the spinal elastesis. Um, and then sometimes there's like inflammation going on in the body like ankylosing spondylitis. We always have to think of things that are outside the box like malignancy or cancer and then also infection. So where is the back pain coming from? This is a diagram uh, of multiple uh, a thin slice of the, of the spine here. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is the disc right here. And then this is the joint back in the, on the back side. And these, this red stuff is all your muscles back here. And then um, in, the, in the middle is a triangle. That's the spinal canal. 
And that's the, the center of where all the nerves pass through. Um, this is a slice of the low back or the lumbar area. And so when the nerves start to get pinched, you might get sciatica, you might get radiculopathy, you might get pain that shoots down the legs. And then we have to start thinking of ways to treat that. So this is the way I classify simply how your pain is coming from. Is it from the disc? Is it from the joint or both? Is it maybe just a true strain? A true strain means muscle strain. You, 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 you tweak the muscle, but it gets better. Um, and you could have a ligamentous problem, which means that uh, ligaments, again, are from bone to bone. So you can have those ligaments stretch or cause uh, some strain. Let's say you get in a car accident. It's very common to get all three of them, uh, disc pain, facet, facet pain, as well as ligamentous pain. And then if you start getting sciatic pain, which is a, it's a, it's an all-encompassing generic term for pain that shoots down the leg, it could be coming from the joints, could be coming from the disc, and a pinched nerve as well. So this is a slide of the, the joint. You can see the circle showing the joint outline. Uh, as due to gravity, I mean, this, this planet has gravity, uh, which is good and bad. This, the, and we're, and we're, we're bipedal animals, so we're standing on our feet all day long. And those, those joints start to wear out. They start to get arthritic. They start to get larger bone, bone spurs. And so those can start to feel pain and, and, and contribute to just back pain itself. Sometimes they'll shoot down to the buttock area. And so those are things that we have to think about. Uh, you can get pain when you rotate. So if you're a golfer or you're a tennis player, you may lean back and you start to swing and you start to feel it going backwards. Uh, and then it, it, occasionally you start to get sometimes some things like what's called a joint cyst. So there's a picture of the MRI right there, that, that white segment on the right side of the screen is a cyst that's pinching on the spinal canal nerves and that can cause the sciatic pain down your legs and that needs to be treated as well. So we usually get x-rays. We can do sometimes do a bone scan on select cases and then we will usually often get an MRI to see how, how severe the arthritis is. Is there something else that we need to watch out on, on what we're missing for? Um, and then we can do things like joint injections or joint blocks on the picture on the right side of the screen. Uh, there is a picture of the nerves that we block, and then we can also put medicine in the joints and put cortisone or steroid to decrease the inflammation to make the joints feel better. So the management and treatment, other than what you may have already tried at the, uh, for this problem, we may be physical therapy, some anti-inflammatory medications, ice or heat, and um, other creams. Then we're talking, starting to do some injections, and those are the injections that I mentioned just now, which would be a joint injection, uh, an, a joint block, which is called a medial branch block. And then there's a thing called a radiofrequency ablation or neurotomy. That's, that's where we put the needle next to that nerve. And it, the needle gets a little bit, the tip of the needle gets a little bit hot and burns that nerve. Uh, the nerve can grow back, but usually takes over six months, maybe a year to grow back. Some people even get two to three years of relief on, on, on some select cases. Um, so it'd be, it is useful for treating short and long-term pain with these procedures. And then we're talking about sciatica. Again, you can look up sciatica on uh, Dr. Google, and it's pretty clear, clear. It's just talking about the back and leg pain. And then there's these, uh, the picture on the right is kind of what we call a, a dermal tomo or ma uh, a map of where pain can shoot down. So if you have a pinched nerve in one specific area, it may shoot down in a specific pattern. So when you come to our clinic, we'll, we'll do an exam. We'll also ask you where your pain is uh, going. If it's shooting down a specific pathway, it might point us toward a, uh, um, an idea of where the pain is coming from. And so this, this sciatica, like I said, uh, could be coming from the disc. It could be coming from something else with, uh, like the joint cyst or a slippage in the spine. So if we look at these pictures right down on, on this picture to the left, there is a disc herniation and it's pinching toward um, the, the nerve on the, on, the, on the left side there, which is actually the right side of the body. And then on the middle screen, again, a big disc herniation on the top, um, uh, the, that's also squeezing the nerves, it's called spinal stenosis. And then, um, and then there's a, a joint cyst on the lower picture in the middle, and that is uh, pinching on the nerves. And then on the right side, it's a, we call it a sagittal view. It's a side view when we get an MRI, we have a lot of slices when we get to see different areas of the spine. And, th and there's a little slippage of the spine there that's pinching the nerve that's exiting out of, 
out of the spine there that can cause, again, sciatic pain or radiculopathy. So uh, these treatment options can include medications, physical therapy, and then we start thinking about some injection options, and those usually typically involve epidural steroid injections targeting specific areas. Um, and then there's, uh, uh, we've tried everything else, and we really made a good effort, um, and we think there's a surgical treatment option, we usually refer you to surgery at that point. So these, there's different types of epidurals. So you go to one clinic, and maybe you go to another clinic in, another clinic in town, they did an epidural, but really matters to me where you do the epidural. Are you targeting the specific nerve that's getting pinched or are you doing more of a shotgun method? So the shotgun methods are really the left side of the screen, the caudal and the interlaminar injections. They can work, but sometimes we wanna be more selective and try to target the nerve that's really getting squeezed or getting pinched. And that's called the transferaminal epidural. So we use those for selectively, mainly for the low back, sometimes for the mid back and the neck, depending on the image. And that's why it's important to look at the MRI and do an assessment of, of you and to kind of figure out what's the best treatment option there. So the reason why epidurals can be very clear, there's a good study here um, that, that, that's listed right now. And this study, there's 69 patients, they had disc herniations and they tried to see how they did with, um, with injections. Uh, they failed conservative care and they were trying to avoid getting surgery. And so with these injections, uh, 53 or 77% of them did have a significant decrease in symptoms and were able to avoid surgery with their disc herniation. Uh, about 16 still had to go on to, to get surgical treatment options. So not everybody gets 100% um, benefit, but there's enough benefit in most people that it can help either delay or even reduce the need for surgery. Now, so there's the other treatments that we do. Uh, we, we always see people with tendon pain. And so people are like, oh, the outside of my hip. So usually it's like they think it's their hip, but it's really the tendon that hurts. It's their gluteus uh, medius and gluteus maximus. There's a bursa. Uh, you'll see on the right side of the screen, it says trochanteric bursa. That's an area of inflammation. Those tendons that insert onto that greater trochanter, which is really the femur bone, it starts to hurt. And then, so that hurts. And then the walking is affected. You may start to limp. Your back may start to hurt. And so there's some other things that can happen. You get knee pain and ankle pain and so forth. So we really want to try to try to address this. A lot of times other folks will have um, other specific injuries like tennis elbow pain or lateral epicondylitis, Achilles or plantar, uh, uh, Achilles tendonitis. And you can get plantar fasciitis too, which is part of the foot. Um, and then, so we want to be able to treat that. So when you come to uh, and see me for these kind of treatments, you may see one of our other providers and then they may order an injection. Um, we use, I, I typically always use ultrasound guidance to really make sure we get in there um, and put it in the spot we think that's gonna affect you the most. So you can see here in this picture, uh, the needle is going straight down toward the, what's called the trochanteric bursa. Um, it's between the gluteus medius and maximus tendon. It's a very particular spot. Um, and without having that guidance, we could be easily outside of that spot. So it may or may not work by what we call diffusion, getting in there or uh, just pure chance, um, but getting, getting uh, ultrasound guidance to make sure we're rightly in the right spot really increases the odds of it helping. And not only that, it actually helps with um, diagnosis. So let's say we get there and it helps you. We know that that's where the problem is. If it doesn't help, we kind of move on to the next uh, treatment option. So in terms of uh, along those lines, um, one of the practice things that uh, focuses that I like to focus on is regenerative medicine therapies. You might've heard about this before. Uh, we call it orthobiologic therapies as well. That's another term that's uh, it's gained some traction. And so in our clinic, we focus on platelet-rich plasma therapy, bone marrow concentrate, and adipose tissue or micronized fat therapy. Uh, there's a brand that, that helps process this called Lipogems. And it's very commonly recognized as a great treatment option for things like knee arthritis um, and shoulder arthritis, hip arthritis um, type issues. So platelet-rich plasma, what is that? It's really platelets from your blood. So we get your blood, we spin it down. And this is a picture of me spinning down the platelets. And the, we, we, we actually get quite a bit of blood, about 120 milliliters of blood, and we spin it down to what you see in that picture, which is really like 
just a little bit. It's like five milliliters, maybe seven milliliters of platelet-rich plasma. And then we put that into the damaged tissue area. So um, we can do things like uh, rotator cuff tendons, uh, joint arthritis, like knee arthritis and shoulder arthritis, hip arthritis. Uh, we could do lateral epicondylitis. And then we can put it in the spine. Uh, we can do uh, put it in the joints of the sacroiliac joints or the lumbar joints or the, uh, the epidural space as well. So there's a lot of therapies that can be treated by, a lot of problems that can be treated by this therapy. Next. So bone marrow aspirate country is a little bit more involved. You're gonna get the bone marrow this time. So you may have heard of bone marrow aspirate uh, if you have any, any, any um, uh, relation to people who have had leukemia, they get their bone marrow aspirated and they'll get a stem cell transplant Plant from another bone marrow uh, donor to, to really re resupply their immune system. Now the bone marrow has a lot of stem cells and these stem cells can form other cells and they can help signal your existing cells. Let's say you have cartilage damage or arthritis and you're gonna, th those cells can help stimulate those cells to either heal or replicate, stay alive, um, reduce the pain, reduce the fluid, reduce the swelling. And so that's the idea behind bone marrow aspirate concentrate. The best place to get that from is the iliac crest, which is on the outside of the hip. Um, and it's, we use a lot of an anesthetic to make it numb and tolerable and to minimize discomfort. And uh, we, we get the bone marrow out, we centrifuge it down, and then we put it in where we think it's gonna help the most. And so uh, here's a picture below of the ultrasound guided procedure where we actually put medication into the knee joint, uh, the knee fluid uh, that goes to the joint and it'll spread all around there. Um, so that's a, definitely a good treatment option for uh, arthritic, arthritic type pains. And then lipogems, uh, another orthobiologic therapy, it's actually using our fat and everybody's got a little bit of fat. And so we can get that from usually the abdomen or the hips and we, 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 uh, we, we, we process that. And then we put, it has a lot of, growth factors we call cytokines um, and supportive tissues like adipocytes, which are really the fat cells. And then there's mesenchymal stem cells, which are in between the fat cells. And that can help stimulate the existing cells to stay healthy, grow, reduce inflammation, uh, improve the longevity of that. Uh, and that can be very powerful. It can last longer than PRP, sometimes even the bone marrow. And this is just a pictures of uh, us processing that basically. You would, if you decide you wanted to come in, we come in for an evaluation. We decide where we're gonna do this um, and then we process it. So we, we come in, we take the fat, just sort of like you're getting a mini liposuction. And then we, uh, we process, we clean the, 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 the tissue, which is in number two, picture number two. And then number three is really putting it back in where we think it's gonna make a big difference. And so the key here is that the, the orthobiologic therapies that we do in our clinic, PRP, bone marrow, aspirate concentrate, and then um, the, uh, um, the micronized fat, the lipogems, are all FDA, that previous slide, are all uh, FDA, um, meet FDA guidelines. So there's a FDA guideline, it's called 21 CFR 1271 right here. And it, it defines the minimal manipulation of processing um, that can help, uh, not alter your, bio, your own biologic characteristic of cell tissues and that meets uh, our criteria according to the FDA. So there's a lot of clinics that may be out there claiming certain things um, like stem cells in umbilical fluid or uh, amniotic fluid. And those are typically frozen. We really don't know if those cells are processed, but those are considered investigational new drugs. So they really have to go through a specific FDA approval process, which to be honest, most don't, or all of them have not. And so we are uh, trying to keep at the cutting edge while meeting FDA guidelines with our practice. And so talking about some outcomes, what are the outcomes? There's a good study here by Montner et al. They, they studied over 180, uh, 180 people and they did ultrasound guided PRP specifically, not the other treatments, but this is just kind of the beginner treatment. And a vast majority of people were satisfied with their treatment after PRP. Uh, we're taking, looking at moderate to mostly to complete resolution of their symptoms, as well as a wide variety of uh, injury locations on that slide, uh, from the elbow to the knee, to the shoulder, to the hamstrings. So these are some images. We do these with cortisone as well, or steroid, but we can also use PRP, and it's just the image of 
the left side being a sacroiliac injection, the middle being a joint injection, and the right side being an epidural. And then we're, uh, let's say we've done a lot of treatments like the joint injections, and we've done uh, maybe epidurals, and then we start to talk about outside the outside of what else could help someone with their chronic pain. We got to figure out where the pain could be coming from, number one, is it reversible, non-reversible, and then what else is there to treat it? Let's say you had some uh, knee arthritis, and then you get a knee replacement. So in the right picture, there's a picture of uh, uh, the bottom of the knee with the knee replacement. You can um, try to treat the pain with either ablations, or you could even do what's called peripheral nerve stimulation and try to treat the nerve pain that goes to the knee and stimulate that nerve so it doesn't feel the pain as much. And so those are great treatment options for joint, joint pains that can't be treated surgically, um, back pain that may have been already been treated surgically. And then there's ankle pain, like the tibial nerve, which really is really involved in peripheral neuropathy. So you're getting pain that goes down to your feet and you're wanting to know, how do I release the pain so it doesn't keep me up from night? This is one of the many treatment options. And we also have spinal cord stimulation, which we'll discuss next. And so uh, leading on to that, um, you may have heard of a syndrome called post-laminectomy syndrome. So that's kind of an all-encompassing term. Basically, you've had surgery in the back, and it's supposed to treat the problem that you have, like back pain, leg pain, and it's still not better, despite the surgery going as best as it could. Um, there's nothing else from a surgical standpoint that they can do revision-wise, or maybe they can, but you're just not ready to do another surgery. Then we're talking about post-laminectomy syndrome. It's a condition where a patient suffers from persistent pain in the back and or legs following surgery to the back. Um, next slide. So now we're talking about how do we treat that? We've gone through all the injection treatment options, and then we're moving on to using uh, more cutting edge nerve stimulation therapies uh, like spinal cord stimulation. You may have tried drugs, done the lifestyle changes, done the physical therapy, done the nerve blocks, epidurals, other injections like we just discussed. And then the options are gonna go back to surgery again. Maybe you're on the second surgery or third surgery. And really there's nothing else that can be done from surgical standpoint, or you're just not ready to do another surgery because of uh, maybe you have a, a heart condition or lung condition, um, or the recovery process is really gonna be the, the ideal. We can try what's called spinal cord stimulation. Uh, another option would be a pain pump, but spinal cord stimulation is what we're going to talk about. Next slide. So what is spinal cord stimulation? It's an established safe therapy that delivers the energy, of, uh, energy to the spinal cord or the dorsal column, which is the back of the spinal cord, through small wires in the back. It was developed in the 70s, and it's been uh, honed in on and perfected over the past 50 years. And so it delivers small electrical pulses, and they've uh, discovered that these these, these electrical pulses really do send uh, pathways up the spinal cord to the brain and really alter the brain signals and perception of pain. So um, in, this, in this picture on the right, you see these leads. And then the, the leads uh, are, are really at the T8 to T9 level starting, and then they kind of go down. And so these leads allow flexibility and programming different uh, waveforms and electrical signals to help alter the, the signals that go up to the brain. And the goal is to reduce pain. Um, sometimes we can eliminate pain, but really the goal is to reduce pain and improve functional activity and quality of life. Um, Nevro is the, one of the, um, the companies that we use, and it does have some cutting edge technology we'll talk about in a minute. So I'm going to show a video of spinal cord stimulation before we go on. And this video really uh, kind of describes, I'm going to kind of over, it has its own narrative, but I'm going to try to describe it as best as I can. So we see this red signal here. It's kind of showing that you may have pain in the back and legs. And sometimes people do get pain down the arms and it can be used for that as well. Um, and it really affects the brain. So we're moving on to the actual procedure here. Uh, the, 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 we numb up the skin and we're putting the needle down. Now here, you're gonna start seeing these wires go through. These are the electrodes. They're really going into the back of the, the spinal epidural space. So they're really not super close to the actual spinal cord and the safety is actually very safe um, as, 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 as you're getting it done with someone who's experienced. And these electrodes, again, are put into a place where we used to typically put it at the T8 and T9 level that go down lower and then kind of help 
stimulate the nerves that are at the center of the spine to help with the reducing pain. It's connected to a, 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 a we call the implantable uh, pocket generator, IPG, but that's the external version of it for a trial. And that can help stimulate uh, the nerves themselves. And it's just showing another lead doing the same thing. And it's gonna go up the spine here. So this is the actual implant uh, picture. So you can see that this is a, the battery pocket. The actual battery is actually very small. Um, we make a small uh, incision and put uh, it under the tissue, like the fat there, to protect it. And then we put the leads in, connect everything, uh, close everything back up. And then uh, after your body heals, which usually takes about two to three weeks in terms of the incision healing, and then, uh, um, then we can start to work on programming. So this is an example of a program. It's a generic picture. There's every, every company has different programmers, um, and, but the idea is very similar. The, uh, the idea is to try to program it so that it can help with a specific pain that you're experiencing, back and leg pain or back pain, um, right or left pain. And those, those can be programmed by the representative. So we'll move on to the next slide here. Uh, so now we're going to talk about that specific uh, HF10 therapy. This is specific to Nevro, the company that provides this therapy. That's a patented therapy that really provides pain relief that's paresthesia free. Paresthesia free means you really don't feel it. You just know that it's, it's working, but you don't feel like a zapping. You may have had a tens unit, you may feel them zapping in the past when you see a therapist, or you have one just for back pain. Um, but this one you really don't feel. Now, there are options to change that to where you can feel it. But the HF10 therapy really is, has shown uh, some improvement in these controlled trials that 80% of patients achieve at least 50% greater uh, pain relief to, uh, up to 12 months or more. Um, and it's, it's, it's effective for back and leg pain. Um, and uh, so it is definitely a treatment option that's, uh, that's only with, the, with, with, this, with this company. Now, um, the other thing that it can do, like I said, it can do low frequency. The low frequency is what you could feel that you might feel. I wanna feel that tingling. I wanna feel something that's going and that's working and we wanna know that it's working. Then you can switch it to the low frequency and do that. You can also pair it to the, the HF test. You can get a dual therapy uh, or more than dual therapies, depending on how many waveforms you wanna try. Uh, the MRI, uh, MRI, it is MRI compatible and the, the battery is rechargeable. Um, so that is useful and that it can be charged just like if you had an iPhone, you put it on a wireless charger um, as well as, or if you have an electric toothbrush and you put it on an electric toothbrush charger, that's how really how it charges. And these batteries can last 10 plus years. And so some of these questions, I'm sorry for the small print here, but if you see it on your screen, uh, some of these questions are, how do you get, how, how, how do I know I'm a candidate? Of course, you come in for an evaluation, you may see either me or one of our uh, providers like a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant. They kind of assess what else have you tried? We've gone through the list of things that we've tried and we really are still struggling with managing someone's pain. Then we kind of talk about, well, let's talk about spinal cord stimulation. You may have had surgery or maybe you have peripheral neuropathy or diabetic neuropathy and we want to try a, a nerve stimulation at that point. So we will do what's called a trial or test drive. And that usually that procedure is usually about seven days. We can go for five to 10 days, depending on on what the comfort level is and, and whether it's working. And then we decide, uh, well, what, what, what is this, is this, are you a candidate for permanent implantation, implantation? If you've had greater than 50% relief, typically you're a good candidate for that. So um, the one thing that you'll have to do is get a psychological evaluation to make sure you're, you're capable of managing the therapy and you're ready for it. And then, um, then we, we ask your insurance company for permission to do the trial and then if you do well with the trial, we will do the implant. Um, these leads aren't permanent. They, these can be removed. Um, there is another way to do these leads. These are the leads that we just showed you were called percutaneous leads, meaning going through the spine with a needle. Um, you can do what's called a paddle implantation, which our surgeons are able to put in. And that has its uh, um, advantages as well, depending on the situation. But that's a little bit more surgery where they have to take a little bone off called the laminectomy. And then put the paddle down and then everything else is the same. Uh, and that goes directly onto the, the spinal area, spinal on the back of the spinal cord. So um, the, these devices can be taken out, 
They can be turned off. You can get an MRI for most indications on, uh, with, these, with these stimulators. And so this is just another slide uh, that they did a study uh, to show that this HF10 does have uh, significant relief uh, when compared to traditional uh, spinal cord stimulation as well as uh, placebo, placebo meaning um, uh, no stimulation at all. And uh, it's significant. I mean, every, not everybody will get the, the relief that, that you're saying that's what you want, but a vast majority do get the relief. And we wanna choose and talk to patients who are interested and uh, meet the criteria for this. Um, another uh, slide of the efficacy, it's called a visual analog scale, VAS for short. Uh, you can measure by numbers or centimeters. And in this case, uh, HF10 therapy reduced the pain from a seven to a 2.4 out of uh, 10. And this lasted for 24 months in this study and, and typically goes longer. Um, now the indications, we've talked about this briefly, things like post-laminectomy syndrome. Sometimes if you had surgery, it can lead to arachnoiditis. That's more of a specific term of nerve pain related to surgery. Uh, sometimes it can happen without surgery, but typically that's with surgery. Uh, the nerves start to clump together and then they start to have abnormal pain firing patterns. Um, now you can get things like CRPS, which is really an injury to the nerves, either in the leg, maybe after surgery or just a trauma. Um, and the whole leg starts to hurt or the whole arm starts to hurt. And uh, those, this is an indication for HF10 as well as spinal cord stimulation uh, and peripheral nerve stimulation as well. Diabetic neuropathy can be treated with uh, spinal cord stimulation, HF10 therapy, um, and so can polyneuropathy. Uh, usually if it's both sides, we like to try spinal cord stimulation first to try to get as much as we can coverage wise. We can move on to the specific nerves, like uh, peripheral nerve stimulation that I mentioned briefly before to really enhance the, the, the pain uh, therapies that, that can provide pain relief. And then we have uh, uh, upper back pain, neck pain, arm pain, uh, complex pain, which is really pain in multiple areas. And we've tried multiple things um, and we're still dealing with significant pain that's, that's affecting quality of life. Then this, this therapy can also be used for that. So uh, what do we expect with a spinal cord stimulation trial? Uh, the first part is the trial phase, right? This is the seven days that I mentioned briefly before. Uh, the leads are temporarily put in and we, we basically clean, make sure the area is clean. Um, and we will have, um, we start the program that day. Um, the, uh, the trial is usually done in office, but it can be done in a surgery center. And the, the leads are really uh, programmed so they try to help reduce the pain. Uh, there's a representative that will contact you and, and actually can change the programming um, to, to change the different settings to try to reduce the pain. Um, usually by day seven, uh, usually by day three to five, you'll get some relief. And then by day seven, it'll be for sure whether or not you thought the, uh, the, the, the trial was successful. If the trial is greater than 50% relief and you're uh, convinced that this helped your quality of life, then we decide together how we're gonna put it in permanently, either through a percutaneous method with the leads or through the paddle implant. And then with the implant phase, the procedure actual isn't that long. The whole time we allot is a little bit longer just to get everything set up. Uh, the procedure uh, done in a hospital or surgery center is usually done under general sedation, sometimes under um, uh, a little bit lighter sedation, depending on one's comorbidities. And then everything's put in uh, just like the, pic, uh, the video that we showed before. Uh, the programs will be um, ongoing and changing to try to help fine tune and treat the pain for maximal effect. And then uh, you'll still be seeing our clinic um, provider, whether it be me or one of our uh, mid-level providers to help um, make any adjustments to your medications and to also consider other, other issues that may be going on. So even if we've tried these uh, other injections in the past, maybe we've decided to do the implant and then uh, we find out that there is another new problem. Let's say you have some knee arthritis or hip arthritis and that's causing some pain or um, um, some other joint arthritis in the back, then we can still treat those. You know, those are areas that we can still treat uh, in addition to uh, the, red, the spinal cord stimulator that's already been implanted. So some final thoughts, um, musculoskeletal and orthopedic and spine pain 
it's quite prevalent. Um, it's, it's everybody's out there. You don't really notice it uh, when walking around, but uh, if you have it, you'll know. Um, the, there is a broad spectrum of disease pathology and diagnosis, meaning a lot of different things can cause similar types of pain. And so one person's experience may not be yours. Um, it may be something that really requires expert evaluation, um, coming into clinic and have uh, imaging done, making sure we kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together and kind of work through some, uh, some form of algorithm to decide what's the best treatment option. And so it's not a one size fits all. We do our best to tailor the treatment to your specific condition and scenario. We'll ask you questions. We'll, we'll run through some options for treatment. And then we really wanna to try to help you with these treatment options. Um, Spina Vada, uh, um, including myself, will always try to offer the up-to-date treatment options to, to help manage the condition and, and be very uh, uh, um, upfront and honest about that. Spinal cord stimulation and HFT therapy really is one of the, the, the more cutting edge technologies that are out there um, that really target the nerves specifically uh, to help with chronic pain, spine pain, pulmonary slam and activity pain, diabetic neuropathy type pain. And those are, are, are great options. Um, Right now at Spine Nevada, we accept most, if not all regional insurances um, and government insurances. Um, and then we also accept care credit. So care credit is usually useful if you decide you wanna try this PRP or orthobiologic treatment and, you're, uh, and we talk about um, a payment plan, care credit helps you with that. And then it's separate from Spine Nevada. So we could talk more about that if you decide to come in for evaluation for those issues. And so I think right now we're going to transition to some Q&A, some questions. Uh, this, oh, by the way, this is a, uh, a, a, a list of our physical medicine rehabilitation uh, providers um, that are um, our mid-level providers, meaning they're the nurse practitioners, they're the physician assistants that really complement me and our team. Uh, we have Jennifer Schroeshine, um, Kimberly Corner, Carla Cordova, and then uh, Cammy ba Baylor, she knows us by Cammy Baker. I appreciate all you guys tuning in uh, to this webinar. Um, and I, I, I hope that uh, this has made some educational difference uh, and uh, explanations of what we do. And uh, if you have uh, questions about um, what we talked about today, you can uh, reach out to Molly or um, one of our marketing um, uh, individuals to help ask some questions. You can ask your primary care for an appointment or you can call yourself, uh, depending on um, the process of your insurance, you can call us at 775-348-8800. Uh, uh, you can go online and uh, fill out a questionnaire to request an appointment. Um, and we will try to get back to you as soon as we can with regards to all that. And then uh, if you are an existing patient, uh, please talk to your um, provider, uh, whether that be one of our surgical uh, physician assistants or physical medicine rehabilitation physician assistant or nurse practitioner, and then uh, ask them, ask them like, hey, I heard this on uh, today's uh, um, webinar um, and I wanted to ask about uh, what this therapy is all about. And they should be able to explain that to you. Um, if you are an existing patient of mine and you wanna talk more about anything I talked about today, um, I can also talk to you about it when you come in. Um, but I appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. Thank you, Dr. Sue. Just to recap tonight's virtual event, Dr. Sue shared with us about non-surgical treatments for spine and joint conditions, including PRP, bone marrow aspirate concentrate, and lipogens. He also shared about peripheral nerve stimulation by Stemwave and the F HF10 spinal cord therapy by Nevro. Thank you all for joining. To learn more or to request an appointment, um, please give us a call like Dr. Sue said, um, at 775-348-8800 or visit spinenevada.com and complete the appointment request form. Thank you again. Have a good night. Take care.